Um, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Governor, let me first thank you and the Chamber for the uh, arrangement of this event, for the nomination of the Hollywood uh, group. I'd like to thank, and there are a few thanks, and this is not an Oscar speech, uh, but it's important. Um, I'd like to thank 20th Century Fox, who've been so very supportive of this endeavor. I'd like to also thank the Welsh Government which, and Minister Edwina Hart, who is here, and they have given us enormous support. The wonderful thing is, as has been mentioned, there are so many members of the family present. We've grandson, granddaughter, niece, a special Liza, great nephews, and indeed grand, yes, granddaughters again, sorry. But there we are, there's so many of them, and it is so wonderful that they are here. And Kate, unfortunately, cannot be with us because she is in New York where she is performing as we speak. So, um, I'd like to just say one or two little things about Richard. You've had that wonderful extemporization from Michael um, about that mythical place called Port Talbot. Um, we are celebrating today a man of extraordinary talent, above all, a fiercely proud Welshman. And uh, he's looking down right now. He's amused. He's, he's quite amused by it all, really, I think, um, because he had that sort of slightly sardonic look in his eye. But he is very proud. And he's very proud it is St. David's Day. And I'll just tell you one or two little things about me. I first met him when I was age 15. And uh, he was some 26. And I was uh, performing in my prep school in an evening of light entertainment, poetry and music. And I was to read one of Dylan Thomas's more famous poems called P Fern Hill. And um, to my horror, I suddenly looked down. It was an open air affair. And there was Richard Burton. Now, Richard did more in a way for Dylan Thomas's poetry than probably the poet himself. And Fern Hill was actually one that was a celebrated rendition. So I was mortified. But that's where my relationship started. And it succeeded and it endured all of his life and still all of mine. Sadly, his has gone. We're wearing red socks. Now, red socks is a very special thing. Richard was buried in red socks. And um, I, I, at his funeral, which was we referred to in Switzerland, I played the organ. And at this small nonconformist chapel, you could hear, if you honestly could have heard, the Welsh voices that just raised the roof off his brothers and his families and all the members that were there uh, singing in Welsh hymns. Anyway, the, the red socks was something that Richard wore most days of his life. Um, I'm told, well, I'm not I'm told, I know. I've obviously, well, not when he was in costume, but that is the color of Wales, and that was what he wore, and quite appropriately, they went with him into the coffin. He was an avid rugby fan. In fact, if he hadn't been an actor, he'd have played for Wales as a wing forward. That was his ambition above all else. But you know, this, this man of so many parts, uh, I think that what we have to understand, that he gave so much to so many people. I've heard the charity side, but my friendship with him was the most important, I think, of my life. And uh, it's like yesterday that we were together. I had one task, one task only, and Lord forbid if I failed. Wherever Wales was playing, wherever Wales was playing in the world, I had to telex him in those days, telex, the score. He could be on location in Africa, he could be in the Far East, in Mexico, whatever it was. And if I missed, by goodness me, did I get a rocket. Well. There we are. Dear Richard, it's a fitting statement at this time for him to be placed here, and I'm very pleased 
So all of you are here to greet this occasion in the manner that it deserves. Thank you.